Welcome again to Garden Wise Adventures. It's another gorgeous evening and I decided today that I am going to release an interview that I did with Dr. Uh, Brian Hopkins. He was my soil professor at BYU and I did this interview in early May and it was the very first interview I did with the equipment that I have. It's a little shaky and then when I downloaded it off my phone I I actually lost it on my computer. So now I found it, I've been able to edit it, and lo and behold, he says basically the same things that we talked about with the lawn ginger. So if you want to hear the scientific side of what we discussed in our last video, this is a great video for you. So I am going to show you the video that I did with Dr. Brian Hopkins from BYU. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'd like to introduce everybody to Dr. Brian Hopkins. He was a a professor of mine when I went to BYU. It's a professor of soil science, right? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, I um, teach here at Brigham Young University. I teach the turf grass science and the soil science and environmental chemistry classes. I do research in those things as well. Well, perfect. Yeah, so what I'd like to ask, you know, I'm, we're talking about uh, science and how important it is in understanding soil and gardens and landscaping. What do you think is the most important thing people need to understand about soil if they're going to be gardening and landscaping? Well, I, I, I interact with a lot of people who are really good at the art of raising plants, but they sometimes aren't always the best at the science part of it. and. I, I, I like to say that you can't manage well what you don't measure. And, and probably the thing that's missing the most in, in uh, you know, folks trying to grow healthy grass and gardens, etc., is that they, they don't take advantage of a tool that we use really commonly in farming, which is soil testing. Uh, there isn't a farmer hardly that's successful that doesn't soil test, and, and yet we rarely soil test in the urban environment, but I frequently get phone calls uh, from people saying, oh, you know, my, I just used to grow great tomatoes, they were beautiful and, and no longer, uh, or my grass, I just can't figure out what's wrong with it. So I'll talk them into taking a soil test, and oftentimes we'll find that they've actually over fertilized is one of the most common things that I run into. Yeah, people don't think about that. Yeah, they really don't. And they just go down and buy whatever at the garden store and and put it on without thinking about it. Well, that's not how farmers do it. Farmers measure what's in the soil and then apply a custom rate. And, and that's a not a very expensive process. You can do a soil sample, have it analyzed for $25, $35, and we can kind of help, help guide. And a lot of times, we actually discover that uh, you don't need as much fertilizer as you were applying, and you'll probably save whatever money that you spend on the soil test in fertilizer. In almost every case, I, I run into that. So that that's a that's a good one to start with, is that. So they need to think about testing their soil because they may be over applying fertilizer or under applying it. They don't know until they've actually done the test. What else do you think people need to know about soil? Well, I mean, managing the water is probably the single most important thing we do and most people over water. Um, and that's bad for a variety of reasons. Uh, it's wasteful for the water supply that we have, um, but it's also not great for your plants either. It, and it tends to move uh, fertilizer and uh, pesticides downward and we'd like them to stay right where we put them and so they can be used and uh, have less environmental impact. If we do things right, put on the right amounts and put on the right amount of water, then we don't have much impact on the environment. But when we over water, and a, a study done by Utah State showed that people pretty typically are applying two to three times more water than what they need. Wow, that's um, a lot. But when they cut back, a lot of times they get brown grass, and so it's a little bit sophisticated sometimes to, to get it right. Yeah, it, I, learning how to understand how to water is probably one of the most important things we where, can do. Where can people go? How, what's the best way to figure out if you're watering too much or how much to water? So it's important to start in the fall. That's especially for grass. It's, it's a time when the grass is beginning to think about winter and it's putting down roots, it's putting its, its energy into making roots. But oftentimes, most of us don't have fertilizer on in the fall, and, and that's the most important application of fertilizer, is that application. 
And so uh, it's important to make sure you have some, some nitrogen, especially down in the fall, to help those roots grow deep. And then in the spring, uh, you need to continue to train your grass. Uh, I like to stress my grass twice in the spring. What do you mean by stress it? I want it to be water stressed. I want it to be vis visually stressed. It looks a little bit gray when I step on it. It doesn't bounce back up. I don't want to go past that, but once it's once it's stressed, then I'll water. For, but oftentimes that's not until late in May uh, before I'll do that. And then I'll water it and then I'll let it stress again. What happens when I do that, it doesn't look good for a few days, but it tells that grass, hey, I need to go down and find some water. And so it grows deeper roots. And so those two things are really valuable to getting uh, to getting uh, uh, good, deep water uh, seeking roots. Then what I need to do uh, through the summer is, is not water until I need it. Uh, and that's hard to give you a rule of thumb because it depends yeah. on how deep my roots are. It depends on how much water holding capacity is in my soil. You just, you watch it. Uh, my, my thinking is, is you just don't water until you look like you need it. Only apply enough that's going to get the water down to the bottom of the root zone. I, I don't need to over apply my water. Most people, uh, the problem is that most people have a, an irrigation clock that goes off every single day. They turn it on in the spring and they shut off in the fall and that's just the worst thing you can do. Um, I, only, I probably only need to water every, um, you know, even in the hottest part of the summer with short roots of grass, maybe every other day. Uh, okay. Worst case scenario. Best case scenarios, maybe a week. In the springtime, it might be uh, 10 days or not at all. <laughs> you know, it's right now, yeah. it's May uh, 9th, and I have not turned on my irrigation system yeah, at my house. I. And and I'm in the rain forecast, I'm probably not going to be turning on my water until towards the end of the month. And it's good. It's, you know, it's good for the grass. It's good for the environment. I like that. Now, I heard uh, somebody told me once that you could take a long-handled screwdriver and push that into the soil, and if it doesn't go in easily, you know it's time to water. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's not a bad uh, uh, way to do that. I, I have a little soil probe that I really like to use, too. It's okay. about the same cost as a screwdriver. You can get one okay. for about 20 bucks. Uh, I guess it's a little more than a screwdriver. A little more. But, yeah. uh, but you know, and then I can, I can feel my soil and see uh, and actually look at my roots and... Um, see what what it is down there but this but yeah if, if the soil is moist the screwdriver is going to go in and you probably don't need to water uh, if it starts getting hard to push that screwdriver in it's maybe time to start thinking about watering okay those are good that's good ideas good ideas about watering okay well thank you very much this definitely helps you're welcome so now that we've heard what dr hopkins had to say and also what the longin had to say about water and soil what can we take from this I think there's just a few things that they said that were very similar that I think are important for homeowners. Number one, don't overwater and don't over underwater your soil. You need to look at your soil, either with a screwdriver or a soil probe. If you need to take a shovel out there, take a shovel out and see how deep you're watering. See if you actually have water into your soil pro profile. Drought stress your grass in the spring. That uh, according to the lawn ginger helps reduce the chance of fungal issues it also helps the roots to grow deeper according to dr hopkins so those are a couple of really good things that you can take from these two interviews that i've done about watering lawns now i in a week or so i'm going to do another video on how to tell if your irrigation system is working properly to tell how much water you're uh, putting out onto your lawn so until that time have a wonderful garden adventure.